Uh, today's talk will be about how to give a good talk. It's based on um, many lines of uh, research, you can say. The first is starting from Aristoteles, poetics, what makes a good tragedy? And this uh, has principles of uh, how to get, get a message across. And the second is uh, from the world of uh, theater right now. It's uh, in the last century has been exploring um, interactions like these, where people are gathered and there's somebody on stage, um, and how to make the communication uh, not one way, but two way, or more, as we'll discuss. And a lot of exploration we did in our group meetings where we discuss how to give talks. And a lot of mistakes that I've made and tried to, um, to fix. Because the first thing I want to tell you is that everyone can improve how they give a talk. If it's the first talk you give, or it's the hundredth talk, or the thousandth talk, you can still improve. It's a lifelong occupation. And I'll talk about uh, things that are relevant for the first talk, and also for people who've already given the same talk a hundred times, which is a different stage in life, but it's also, I try to speak about that. So the talk will be composed of three parts. The first is how to prepare the talk. The second is how to present the talk face to face. And the third is how to take questions. And I'll be happy to demonstrate if you ask me questions. <laughs> <laughs> People are coming in. And In each of the parts, there's just one really, really important point. It's basically a technique that will improve your talk tremendously. And I think everybody should know that. When you prepare, it's to have a single premise, and I'll explain. When you present, to look into the audience's eyes, which I'll explain. And when you, ask que when you take questions, to listen, <laughs> which I'll also explain <laughs> why it's so difficult. So, we are asked to give a talk. First decision is, what will I talk about? One mistake that gets made often is, I have something that I'm very passionate about, and I have something that I think the audience will find interesting, important, and impressive, and I'll go with the second. So, my first advice is, of all the things that you have, talk about what you're most passionate about right now. As you prepare to talk, the first thing to do is to come up with a premise. What's a premise? A premise is a main idea. And how do we know if something is a main idea? It has to be a complete sentence. So for example, um, the cytoskeleton and cell shapes is not a premise. Or how to give good talks is not a, good pre is not a premise. Or a Good talks and a central idea is not a premise. A premise is a good talk has only a single premise. That's a premise because it's a full sentence that tells you something. So the intellectual challenge is, first of all, to think of one sentence that tells the one point of your talk. It's a full sentence. And now, this is, sounds easy, but it's not easy. It also applies to writing. Before you start to talk, not, not you know, just to launch into it, before you start to talk, to think of the one idea. This is an organizing principle for the talk, because now the talk should contain only things that are relevant to the main idea. 
And other things which are cool, interesting stuff, but aren't relevant to the main idea, should be out of the talk. Just uh, for your uh, more general range, I want to say that this is also the one principle of writing plays. Going back to Aristoteles, and more recently to the Bible of Hollywood movies, the art of dramatic writing. This book I recommend to anyone. It's a very wonderfully written book. Art of Dramatic Writing. Who wrote it? No. Who wrote it? Egri. And talks a lot about the premise. And we'll talk more about how to build a talk like a drama later. Macbeth. Premise. Ruthless ambition is its own destruction. Every character in the play proves this or the opposite. So you give a well-structured play. Uh, Shakespeare apparently had this in mind is writing the play before starting to write the play. So the main idea, full sentence. Now we go on to prepare our slides. The same idea for each and every slide. So in my lab, for example, when I, we do lab presentations, the rule is that every slide A good slide adds the premise written at the top. This is the premise of the slide, but every slide has a full sentence. You know your slide isn't as good as it could be if it's not a full sentence, like experimental data, or the cytoskeleton, or actin filaments yesterday and today, or so, whatever. <laughs> okay, so. Um, the cytoskeleton is shaped by the action of polymerizing actin filaments. It's a good premise. It's the one point you want to put on the slide. Now, if you can't do that, it means your slide contains more than one premise. And that's impossible for our mind to remember. You get kind of a hazy feeling. Of it. So it's good to separate into two slides, more three slides, four slides, as long as each one has one premise. Uh, I'll demonstrate this with uh, something that we have a lot in our graphs, which is data. Let's imagine we have some data in the form of a graph. So the worst thing to do is to write something like this. This is our slide. A little bit better is to write time, t, velocity, v. It's a little bit better. I'll find out whether that's real. <laughs> this gives us a perfect opportunity to talk about something important in the interaction. If something like this happens, <laughs> it's good not to ignore it and pretend that it isn't there, <laughs> but to, for the speaker to acknowledge it or a cell phone is ringing. Indicate to record an emergency in this building. If you're hearing evacuation signal sounds after this message, Walk to the nearest stairway exit and leave the floor. All handicapped occupants shall follow the building evacuation plan. While this report is being verified, occupants on other floors should await further instructions. This is a good talk. <laughs> <laughs> so pre-planned. I have like a sinking feeling of fear now. Emergency in this building. If your floor evacuation signal sounds after this message. What do you think we should do? <laughs> this, this is usually a false alarm. Usually really a false alarm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, signal doesn't go off. It's all Ha, 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 ha.